Be Hero presents Sheroes. everyone alicia here and amy and we are asking the so-called heroes to step aside for a moment so that we can give the sheroes their turn in the spotlight yes you heard right welcome to sheroes a podcast by be hero media so just sit back because it's time for the real game changers to show you how it's done about two weeks ago we put out our last episode for the olympic mini mini series at least for this olympics We hope you enjoyed them. We really enjoyed seeing many countries accomplish firsts at the Olympics. Not that they necessarily got gold, but for some events, it was the first time a country had had someone in that sport, or the first time someone from that country medaled at all, or in some cases, it was their first gold medal, or it was their first gold medal in that sport. It was so fun to watch and witness all the accomplishments of the athletes, We only had time to highlight a few of them, but there is always the next Olympics. Yeah, I think the hardest thing about this Olympics was planning which, who we should actually talk about. It was like, there were a ton of people that we wanted to talk about, but then I was like, oh, we can't do like six gymnasts and we can't do like seven beach volleyball players. We can't do only Americans, (laughs) although I don't know if we did any. (laughs) Um, So we, you know, that was the hardest part about it, but it was tons of fun. And, you know, definitely we'd love to hear who your favorite Olympian was that you saw or what was your favorite sport to watch. Personally, mine was watching the beach volleyball gold medal match for the women. I've been looking forward to this since, I guess, last Olympics when they didn't win gold. (laughs) So yeah. that was definitely a highlight for me. But, of course, we'd love to hear about yours. All right. Well, now let's move on to our Shiro for this week. Who are we going to talk about this week? All right. So this week, we're going to talk about Odette Sansom. She was born and raised in France, then moved to Great Britain after she married a British man. Her father died in World War I, and when World War II started, her husband joined the army while she stayed at home with her children. During this life, during this time, her life was so peaceful and good that she felt guilty about it and wondered if she should be doing something more. Can you imagine having your life so good during a war that you, uh, you know, feel bad? <laughs> I cannot imagine that, mostly because I can't imagine really what it would be like to be in an experience of war. But, I mean, that's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So in the spring of 1942, she heard over the radio that the Navy needed photos of the west of the coast of France. She had several photos since she grew up there that she could send. And while she didn't think that they would be useful... She sent them anyways. It turned out that she mailed her package to the war office instead of the Navy. So when they contacted her about her photos, she thought they were returning the photos. But instead, they asked her about her time in France and asked if she thought her knowledge of France could be of some use to the war office. With three children at home, she thought perhaps she could help with some translations or adopting soldiers, but that she needed to take care of her daughters. After giving them her permission to pass her name along for some part-time work, the meeting concluded and they did not return her photos. Sometime later, she was contacted again and found out that they had run through, run a thorough background check on her and they wanted her to become an agent of the SOE. What is the SOE? It is. It stands for Secret Operations Executive, and its main purpose was to conduct espionage, sabotage, and reconnaissance in occupied Europe, and later also in occupied Southeast Asia against the Axis powers, and to aid local resistance movements. She said this was not possible for her to become an agent of the SOE. She had three daughters at home. 
What if she and her husband were captured or killed? Her daughters could become orphans. But some part of her wanted to prove the the war office wrong, um, that, that they had chosen the wrong person. So she joined the SOE and put her heart into the trainings um, because while she knew they were wrong, she would feel guilty if she was rejected for any other reason than for her own honest work. Which is kind of impressive (laughs) that she cared that much to uh, do her best with the intention of failing. (laughs) (laughs) I know it made me laugh. She just wanted to prove that her best was not what they were looking for or even needed. In her efforts to prove that her efforts weren't good enough, she eventually mastered many parts of the training and thought her time would be better spent doing something other than practicing pretend. There was one part of her training that she didn't like and didn't master. I might be remembering it wrong, but I believe they were practicing what to do if your parachute failed. In the last jump that she did, she didn't quite jump right and rolled her ankle and hit her face. She suffered a mild concussion. She had a strong personality that the SOE worried could be problematic during the war. But despite her personality, they thought she would be instrumental as an agent, and so she was assigned to travel to France by boat. After arriving, she met her contact, Peter Churchill, who, after spending some time with her, wanted her on his team. After a couple of appeals to the SOE headquarters, he was able to get approval to keep her on his team. She acted as courier while in France, which I don't really know that much about, and I can't say if this is the best reference, but there was a movie that came out this year about a courier during the Cold War, um, which I think kind of just helps provide some kind of imagery of what it might have been like for her and what her responsibilities could have been. So that movie um, happens to be called The Courier, and it's not about a shiro, but I think it's worth the watch. Um, In her first mission, completing her assignment, she was recommended to stay the night at a German brothel, which was curiously one of the safest places that someone could hide. That evening, the German police came to the brothel looking for an army deserter, and the only reason they didn't check her room is because the madam said it was occupied by her niece that was suffering from smallpox. On another occasion, after Peter sent a complaint to SOE headquarters, that another agent, Agent Gok, uh, Gokt, <laughs> was causing problems in the progression of their work. Agent Gok and Peter were directed to return to Britain to sort out their differences, and another agent, Hudson, would be sent in their stead. During the drive to the drop zone, they were pulled over and required to produce their papers for permission to be traveling after curfew, which they didn't have. The driver said he was just taking them to get away for privacy reasons for a couple of hours and would return presently. Miraculously, the excuse worked and they were permitted to continue their journey. So I do have a question about this. Was was Odette on this drive with them? You didn't mention. Uh, Yes. So it's basically implied that all of these events she was on and included in. (laughs) Okay. So this first attempt to send Peter back to the SOE failed, and they had to reschedule. So later, she was traveling after curfew again, and was stopped again, and did not have um, any curfew papers. And this time, her cover story was that she was rushing to see her very sick child. After multiple tries, they still hadn't been able to send Peter and got... Gokt? Got, <laughs> got, got? I don't know. Back to Britain with the planned aircraft... This time, they found an abandoned airfield and contacted the SOE about scheduling the switch there. The time for the switch had arrived, and they met at the abandoned airfield. But while they were waiting for their plane, they discovered the location was a trap. The group split up, and she was chased by German soldiers and a German shepherd. To escape, she crossed an icy river waist deep, and she survived those cold temperatures and met back up with her team. Eventually, Peter did make his way back to Great Britain, and Odette remained in France doing a lot of Peter's normal responsibilities. While Peter was gone, a German Secret Service agent had captured one of the SOE agents that knew Odette and 
he had given her name to him. The crafty German had tricked the agent into believing that he would switch sides and become a British agent. All of this information was packed passed back to Great Britain, and Odette was warned not to trust him. All the while, Peter was coming back to France, and she was recommended to relocate on the other side of the lake. She decided to find a good entry location for Peter first. On the day that Peter jumped out of the plane back on French soil, they were hiking back down the mountain, and Odette fell and broke her back. She acted as though it wasn't very serious, not letting on the kind of pain she was in. 48 hours later, while staying in a hotel, the German agent from before set a trap to arrest them. After all of her previous escapes, she would not escape this time and was taken to an Italian prison where she informed them that Peter Churchill was Winston's dis distant relation and that she was married to Peter. This provided some form of protection. They now, I'm going to cut in here real quick and just let you all know that Peter Churchill may have been a distant relation to Winston, but it certainly was not close enough for there to be any, um, you know, any like particular uh, connection between them. And Odette also was not currently married to him. You probably figured that out on your own, but just in case you didn't, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this provided some form of protection. They didn't want to kill Winston's distant relative. and The they Germans. Couldn't... Yeah, the Germans didn't want to kill him. And they couldn't prove that she wasn't married to him. She and Peter were eventually moved to a German prison and were interrogated by the Nazis. Many times, the German officer responsible for her capture offered different services to her, but sh because she couldn't trust that he wasn't trying to get information from her, she always refused these and ended up suffering from hunger, among other things, during her time in prison. During one interrogation, she convinced the Nazis that she was the head of the spy ring and not Peter. She convinced them that he was stupid and that he didn't know anything. They never tortured him, but they did torture her. Yeah, so I didn't really want to go into, like, her torture. Um, you can find that information elsewhere if you'd like to. It's in the book that we used as one of our main resources for this. And you can also e even find it on Wikipedia, or I'm sure it's on just about every source for her. So you can find it if you're interested, but I, we didn't want to include it in this. Um, so... If you want to find it, you're welcome to go look elsewhere. Eventually, Peter was taken to one concentration camp, and she, Odette, was taken to a concentration camp for women. It was considered one of the worst things that could happen to a woman. While there, while there she was kept in isolation but never killed. Her cell was next to the punishment room, and she heard all the punishments that were done to the women in the room next door. She was starving, sick, and growing weaker, and eventually slipped into a semi-coma. The guards sent her to the camp doctor, who revived her, then sent her back to her cell. Due to poor health, she was moved to a cell outside the crematorium. She could hear the screams of the people who were murdered, then sent to the crematorium, and later she could hear the screams when they sent living prisoners to the crematorium. After many concentrate concentration camps had been liberate, liberated, Heimlich Himmler ordered that all occupants of the camps be annihilated. Despite the fact that she should have been one of the first to be executed because she was a witness to their atrocities, she was kept alive. One day she was taken out of the camp. She thought she was being driven to a remote location to be executed, but they didn't execute her. Instead, she was taken to a town where the Americans were, they told them she was a Churchill, hoping that with her in their custody, it would protect them from their impending doom. She told the Americans who, were, who the Germans were, and the Germans were all arrested. That evening, the Americans offered to provide a room for her for the night, but she told them she wanted to stay outside since she had been kept in isolation and away from the outdoors for so long. The other reason she didn't want a room is because when the Germans traveled with her, they brought a lot of important papers from the camp, and she wanted to get as much information as she could from them. Eventually, she made it back to Eng England and was given immediate medical care. During her time in prison, the wounds from her torture never healed and needed special care. 
she her back had not healed either and much of the bone had dissolved from the starvation because of her strong will she was able to not break under torture and reveal any soe agents or locations where they were and because of not breaking under torture and for her service for the soe and also for um serving as a witness to a lot of these atrocities she was awarded the george cross at the time, she was the only woman who received it w- while she was currently alive. Um, I haven't checked to see if that's still true. I would be surprised if it was, but um, yeah, I'm not sure on that. Okay, so what do we like about her? So after, you know, kind of giving you her whole life story, um, there was one story that was kind of funny that we wanted to include um, for you all. And this is a story where... When she was working in France before she got arrested, um, it was around Christmas time and she and other SOE agents, they were at an inn. There were German soldiers there and she went up to them and asked if they could have permission to use the piano. And since it was Christmas time, they heartily agreed and said they'd be happy to sing along. She then took it one step further and said they would like to play in privacy and if they would have permission to bring the piano into another room uh, Uh, if they could yeah and the germans they accepted this too but they told them that the piano needed to be returned the following morning she then responded that the people in her group were physically weak from hard labor and asked if the germans would move the piano for her group (laughs) Uh, that story is so funny to me i'm not sure how um how she pulled this off but they ended up moving the piano for them (laughs) all right so where in the media can you find her so most of the information that we used for this um she wrote was from the book codename lease uh we also i also um just as a reference throughout this to get names mainly names correct um i also used wikipedia There are other sources you can look at, uh, but those are the ones that we used. Now that we are wrapping up, before I forget, what happened to her husband? So her husband did survive um, World War II. um, And then when they both got back to England, they they separated and divorced. Then she married Peter Churchill. And then eventually they separated and divorced. And she married one other person who I don't remember who it was. So her husband's kind of more of a side note than at least uh, what we're telling about her story. Yeah, as far as this part of her life and the story goes, yeah, he's a side note. Well, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our show. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We can be found on Facebook at Be Hero Media and Twitter at Be Hero Media. Now, this is the last episode of the season. As a heads up, we will be going on break for a few weeks in preparation for the new season. Let us know if you have any Shiros you would like us to talk about next season. Also, let us know if you would like to join us as a guest to discuss a Shiro. And to women and girls the world over, be be brave. brave.